John O'Groats, here we come. This morning, we leave Wick and venture north to John O'Groats. Dunganspe Head with its sea stacks are nearby, and we'll nip up too to Dunnet Head, before heading due west via Thurso and Betty Hill, then south to the hamlet of Scale for our third overnight stay. We're heading to the far north. So far, the weather's looking good, but will it last? At the moment, it looks like we're heading straight into the sea. So today, we'll be stopping off at various scenic spots along the way, and one unexpected location, too. In a quarter of a mile, you will arrive at your destination. For years, I've dreamt of cycling from Land's End to John O'Groats, but maybe I've left it a tad late by now. But anyway, I'm, or rather we, are excited to be here at long, long last. You have arrived. Arriving at John O'Groats, we walk to the famous signpost. I'm sure many folk think that John O'Groats is at the very top of Scotland, but no, Dunnet Head is the place, and we'll be heading there later this morning. It's 9.45 a.m. and there's very few people around. So I ask another tourist to take a photo of us both. The pole's too slippery for me to go horizontal. And in typical fashion, it's raining, but fantastic to be here at John O'Groats. We're both hoping as we as we approach Duncansby Head, we'll actually see some puffins. Now we know why we usually go on holidays abroad, because this is the British weather, this is the Scottish weather in particular. And uh, yeah, you can hear it. And uh, we're at Duncansby Head now, by the way. We want to go over and see the sea stacks. Uh, but at the moment, well, we can't see a thing really, can we? It eases off a bit, then we're going to have to go for it, I think. <laughs> wow, it's sunny over there now. Right, let's go. Well, actually, I go, whilst better half remains in the car, keeping warm and dry. Rain is on and off, coming from the north, so I'm constantly turning, cleaning the lens and shooting as I go. I want to get right around the stacks for shots looking back to the coast. See stacks? We're well in view. <laughs> Every few metres, varying images present themselves. As always, I wish I was here at sunrise or sunset. And a rainbow would be very nice. And actually, given the weather we're having, it's possible. Yes, I've been looking out for puffins, but so far, no luck. Just goals. That's about as close as I'm ever going to get to a puffin, I reckon. We're dodging sheep on the B855 road, heading towards Dunnet Head. From Duncansby Head is just 16 miles. And this is our second opportunity to see puffins. Fingers crossed. It's on our way to Dunnet Head. Thank you, matey. Continue for three quarters of a mile. Ah, cyclists. <laughs> no, then it heads further north. Because it juts out. I think it's 
on the thatch, right? Dunnet Head is the most northerly point in mainland Britain. Have you seen any puffins? There's one or two down there. Is there? All oh, right. But, um, they're not coming close. No, they're not coming close. Curses. I mean, I'm not expecting one to hop onto my hand, but, oh well. So, that's done it head. Oh well, been there, done it. However, one thing I was not expecting to see through the haze is the old man of Hoy on the Orkney Islands. Wow, albeit shot on a long lens. Well, that's incredible. We thought we'd see some puffins this morning and especially here at Dunnet Head, but no, not a single puffin in sight. In a quarter of a mile, turn right onto Trail Street, A9. Trail Street. Passing through Thurso, we're heading on the A9 towards Betty Hill. We were here. Turn right. Not at the moment. Shut up, Nagnav. Actually, I don't mean it. <laughs> it's been a godsend. Passing Noon Ray nuclear facility, I briefly stopped for a photo. Then I had a vision. Must stop taking those drugs. Between two signs for Caithness and Sutherland, there's a few vehicles parked up. So, thinking there's a nice view and not bothering to change into walking boots, I head off. Big mistake, because in places it's very boggy. These are peat bogs that fuel the midges. Fortunately, it's mid-May and they're not quite out as yet. Something tells me I should have put my walking boots on. Idiot! I'm a total plonker. Anyway. Must press on, as there's no going back now. I'm oblivious to the fact that I'm heading towards a special cove. Moving on, there's a slightly sketchy descent into the cove. Wow. I take shelter in a sea cave as it begins to rain again. The bird life is way up on the cliffside. Wow, a puffin. This puffin is using a rabbit hole for its burrow, it seems. Wow, this is awesome. The puffin cove and I've seen one puffin, just one so far. Distant, albeit distant, but to the puffin. Karen's gonna be well chuffed, although she'll see it through my monitor, of course. I'm just amazed there's a few people down here. Oh look, there's a puffin over there. Oh yeah, in this direction. One guy with binoculars is helping enormously with bird location, etc. A puffin at last. Go on, take off, mate. Bit of action. Come on, I'm burning the gigabytes. Hurry up. Just having a stretch. So Eventually I get back to the car, having abandoned Karen for probably close on an hour. And uh, yeah, she's just filling in her diary. So now we're heading further west towards Betty Hill, whereupon we'll head south to our final destination in Scale. There are so many places to stop off on the north coast, if only we had more time. From tomorrow onwards, as we head further west towards Dunness, the scenery will get much more dramatic, I'm sure. Now, I should give my better half a big shout out because she's been doing all the in-car filming. I have a windscreen mount, but unfortunately, we've had issues with it, so that's been abandoned. That's meant Karen holding the GoPro on the dash for quite some time, up to a couple of minutes at least. She should be so lucky, eh? <laughs> Yes, it's a lovely drive down into Betty Hill, with some rain, then sun, more rain, and so on. But beautiful light when the sun breaks through. Oh, far 
Far Beach. Is that Who one? was telling me? Yeah, the lady was telling me about Far Beach. We'll have to come up and do it another yeah. time. Just after Invernaver, we turn off the NC 500 A road towards tonight's stopover. We always said we wouldn't do glamping, but it was the only accommodation available in the Betty Hill area, despite searching some three months earlier. Well, we're in our glamping pod, the wee hoos glamping pods, in a place called Scale, it's a little hamlet down here. And there's a river just across the field and uh, a hill up behind us and to the left of the glamping pod, apparently a Viking fort centuries and centuries ago. And there are mountains around, but uh, yeah. So we're in this hamlet of scale. It's about seven miles south of Betty Hill. And Betty Hill is quite a bit to see there. And we've got a fabulous beach called Far Beach. Anyway, that's for tomorrow morning. Okay, so here's a little mini tour of our glamping pod. Here's the bathroom, here's the shower. There's me in the mirror, scary. And uh, pretty much as we go around, oh yes, here is the kitchen area. And out here, our view. Yeah, lovely location. So we head out to the River Neva. Our hosts had told us of the Red Priest slain by a Viking attack in AD 722. And this stone marks his grave, as legend would have it. Next, we head uphill behind the pods for another exploratory walk. We're now climbing the steep hill up behind, where we should have some nice mountain views. Um, whoops. It's avoiding the peat bog path on the other side. Regarding dinner tonight, we picked up a takeaway earlier. Well, should have known it would be processed. Yuck. Oh well, here we go. Cheers, babe. Cheers. Happy holidays. Next time.